For those of you dreaming about living off grid, I'm gonna tell you right now, don't do it. If you do, do it gradually. Set yourself up with everything you need beforehand because you never know how hard it is to t drill and tap two holes until you have to do it. And you gotta fire up the generator to run this or you think you're so smart because you put your trash can below your uh, project so the chips would go in it and you drop your punch in the trash can three times before you realize that wasn't so smart. So this is my wind generator project. I'm using a Lisa Neville 130 amp alternator from my uh, Cummins. I'm using the fan from the Cummins. And this is going to be my temporary setup. Normally it would be a DC driven motor, but... I'm going to attempt it with an AC Lease Neville, see how that works out. We get some pretty high winds out here. If I get it up high enough and directionalized, it should be okay. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be phase one. I'm drilling and tapping the pulley to handle the hub of the fan. And then I'm going to build my tower and then set up my wiring which haven't figured out yet how I'm going to make it so it can spin 360 degrees. I've got some bearings that I'll be using. For the base. They are... 12.6 volts. Not bad for an overcast day. 12.7. Multiple charge controllers because I have them charging up several different batteries. And then the batteries are all tied in together. And also, don't use jumper cables. And I'll show you why. Jumper cables you don't get a good connection to your battery, you'll build up a, uh, a corrosion <clears throat> like this. And it builds up a barrier. Kind of the same thing that happens with your boats when you store your boats through the season. You know, you go back in the off season there and nothing works. You have green corrosion all over your connections. That's because it's not a good tight connection. It's not a sealed connection. And it, it automatically does not want to be connected to that other piece. So it, it creates a barrier. So don't do that. I think this will do okay. It's 12 volt, 130 amp. It's a good, uh, good alternator. I mean, considering it's, it was free, we're going to see what I can create out of free. Check back with me next episode. And we'll... uh. See how I progress and how it works. How I decide to hook up the wiring.